Hi, my name is Tracy Takahama Espinosa, and this is a video on authentic learning and how your brain actually processes that and what can we do as teachers to leverage that in our classrooms. Authentic learning is based on this core idea that it's easier to retrieve memories and facts and skills when they've been embedded in individually relevant and meaningful contexts. As always, it's important to remember is that there's great human variability. What is authentic to you might not be authentic to me, right? So we have to be very adept at identifying what is truly authentic for the majority of learners in our classroom. So since this concept of authentic learning has been bented around for decades, I thought I'd highlight some of the definitions that have been used to bounce us around with you as far as the discussion point when we meet up again. Some of the different components of authentic learning include the following. This is based on rules idea, which I, I'd like to bring up in our discussion later on because I think that there's some really nice and broad parameters that are placed on this concept of authentic learning here. The first is that for something you've considered authentic learning, it's really based on real world problems that engage learners in work of professionals. So basically allowing a kid to go out and be a surveyor of the land or an architect or to gather specimens as a biologist is one way we could consider things to be authentic in our classroom. The second way is that authentic learning components are based on inquiry activities that practice thinking skills and metacognition. So it's not something that is only experiential. Okay, yes, we went out and we planted the garden, for example. But did we challenge ourselves at a metacognitive level as well? The third point has to do with discourse among the community of learners. This big idea of one plus one is three. Was there exchange amongst the people in this context? It's not that anybody can have authentic learning in and of themselves, just doing things all by themselves, but that learning is innately social. And fourth, that student empowerment through choice is really evident. So that authentic learning includes a, a certain level of autonomy, that it's not dictated by the teacher. I'd love to hear your ideas about that when we get together in class. Now, most of us who use authentic learning are very much convinced about the benefits, but I thought that this video was wonderful in a great summary of concepts. And I'd like you to hear the range of ideas that this principal brings into this when she describes authentic learning, especially as they go from meeting the needs of state-based testing requirements. Think about this for a second. So when we get together, I'd really like to compare your ideas with her vision on authentic learning. It's also important to try to define this idea of what is an authentic learning environment. And so what does this mean in terms of, of context? And I want to show you multiple different visions of this, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this um, when we get together. One is that authentic learning is problem-based learning relevant to content domain. So that means that the problems that are discussed must be real things. So let's discuss trash collection in our city or the threat of the volcano or bullying in our hallways or the quality of the food service at school or whatever it might be, right? So it has to be a real problem. Another vision on this comes from Petraglia's idea that authenticity can neither be predetermined or preordained. So it's all based on prior experience. So we can't really say that something is authentic without knowing the individual to whom it's just being prescribed. The third idea is that authenticity occurs not in a learner or the task or the environment, but the dynamic interaction among all of those components. So authenticity is really comprised of what the learner is bringing to the table, what it is we're asked to do, what the environment is that we created, the interaction, the dynamic of that exchange. And the fourth aspect is pretty interesting, and I think this is one I'd love to, you know, chew on a little bit more when we're together, is that cognitive authenticity is more important than physical authenticity. For example, should you get kids dressed up to be Arthur or Where's Waldo, or should you be concerned more about what's going on in their own heads, not just that dress up experience, or rather than taking them on that field trip, you know, which is physically authentic, have we also assured that the conditions are cognitively authentic to that individual? Is it something that plants new ideas in their head? So what does it have to do? Is the environment uh, what's really the most important thing, or is it what's happening in that kid's individual kid's head that's most important? And finally, I'd like to introduce this interesting idea when we talk about what is an authentic learning environment now, Nowadays, with technology, what does it mean to have an authentic learning experience? Must authenticity necessarily involve technology, for example? 
Or does authenticity have to do with the context of these days? I'd like to share a video by a very interesting teacher who talks about authentic learning at his school and what they've actually done to replicate conditions of a real workplace. So an additional angle that this teacher brings into the conversation is transdisciplinary thinking. He's basically equating the idea of doing authentic learning to a way of integrating maths and writing and creative processes. I think this is something that I'd love to explore more with you because true authenticity then, does this mean that it is it naturally linked to this idea of transdisciplinary thinking and problem solving, which is really the way most problems in the world are approached anyways, right? And the last big idea I'd like to bring into this discussion of authenticity has to do with authenticity today. Does this necessarily involve technology? And there are a lot of different research articles coming out now related to authentic learning and technology education and basically understanding how fieldwork or exploration is really the greatest experience in authentic learning and how could this be facilitated through virtual realities. Um, going on field trips or doing simulations. And there are several different businesses cropping up around this that have to do with looking at augmented reality uh, experiences. One of them, which I was able to see at the Reimagine Education Conference recently, has to do with something called Labster, which is to use laboratory experiences, but through virtual reality. This means that you do not have to invest a million dollars into a wonderful laboratory for your kids, but could they actually have a similar experience um, just on their computers? Let's watch a short video on that. So as you can see from that video and the list of participants so far, this is being applied a lot to university laboratories, but it can be used with younger students as well to teach lab protocol, for example. Why is it that you can touch certain types of elements and not touch other things? Or what would happen if you did mix this, that, and the other thing? You know how kids love explosions, right, in chemistry classes? Well, this is actually showing them how you can mix and match different types of elements as well. So it can be used with younger kids. And so there is this element now. Does this mean that authenticity, since kids live with so much in the digital age, does it actually mean that doing things with virtual reality or augmented reality is going to play a bigger role? role in education and obviously it is but what does that mean for your particular school context and is that a a welcome thing at your school or for you personally perhaps at this level of you know cost benefit things and um, people can't afford to install these very expensive labs or to buy tons of mice to do experiments and things like that in schools but would they be able to reduce costs and have a broader range of experiences through uh, virtual reality? That's a question for us. Okay, so last big question related to risk factors of authentic learning. Most teachers buy into the idea that authentic learning is definitely important. However, then they still go back to their textbook. And why did they do that? Sometimes there is a risk factor that people feel that they can't cover enough material due to time. What I'd like to discuss with you is is perhaps it actually saves time because you're not only doing the step-by-step -step content of what a textbook might have, but you're actually broadening this use of integrated skill sets into a single experience. Resources. Do we really have enough resources? My school can't buy that, that particular program to do that virtual experience. What does this mean in terms of resources? Does authentic learning actually require more resources than traditional textbook teaching? And I want to throw out this last idea sort of as kind of like the gauntlet here. Maybe part of this is that we're changing the way we look at teaching. We're actually challenging teachers then to say, okay, yeah, authentic learning experiences are different. It's very different to plan a class that has authentic learning going on than to just, you know, follow the, the steps that are, that are suggested in the back of your textbook. It requires a lot more imagination. And is that maybe one of the challenges that we see as far as teaching is concerned nowadays in applying authentic learning contexts, constructs, environments, and methodologies? So I'd like to leave you with this quote by Steinbeck, which is that, I've come to believe that a great teacher is a great artist and that there are as few as there are any other great artists. It might even be the greatest of the arts since the medium is the human mind and spirit. I, that's wonderful. But I'd like to push back a little bit. I don't think that great teachers in a sense are, are so rare. I think though that using your imagination, that incorporating authentic learning is a mind shift. It's a different way to teach but it is uh, well worth the effort. And I don't think that we'll be as rare, those of us who want to incorporate authentic learning won't be as rare uh, as Steinbeck maybe hinted at uh, many years ago. Okay, so 
I'm going to leave you there. I hope you have lots of great questions about authentic learning and that we have an active debate when we get together. Looking forward to seeing you.